The Pentagon doesn't think the Chinese Communist Party will attack Taiwan within the next two years. President Joe Biden also expressed concerns about China's aggression, but didn't think they will do anything more. In response to U.S. House Speaker's trip to Taiwan, China is also planning to cancel talks with the U.S. about climate change and defense security. China teamed up with major media outlets and tech companies to relabel Taiwan as a province on digital maps. Taiwan objected. China's electronic chip industry is facing problems domestically and internationally. The largest state-backed chip fund has become a hotbed of corruption, and the U.S. Chips Act is hindering international corporations from investing in China. A new animal-derived Hennepa virus, named the Langya virus, has appeared in China. The virus is highly contagious and can be fatal, although there are no deaths yet. China's government has issued no warnings. Finally, China is beginning to relax its COVID travel rules. Stay tuned for the specific measures. Let's get into it. Welcome to Sound of Hope News. My name is Daniela Woolensack, and today is August 9th. The United States is standing by its assessment of a communist invasion of Taiwan, meaning Beijing will not attack Taiwan in the next few years. This is according to a senior Pentagon official on August 8th. After U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, the Communist Party of China was furious and launched provoking military exercises near Taiwan's coastline. When asked if the Communist Party would attempt to launch a military offensive against Taiwan within two years, Deputy Defense Secretary for Policy Colin Kahl said, quote, No. Clearly, the PRC, People's Republic of China, is trying to coerce Taiwan. Clearly, they're trying to coerce the international community. And all I'll say is, we're not going to take the bait, and it's not going to work. Last November, senior U.S. generals said it was unlikely that the Chinese Communist Party would militarily invade Taiwan in the next few years. They privately said that they did not believe the Communist Party could be ready militarily until 2027. On Monday, before traveling to Kentucky to inspect flooding, President Joe Biden also said he is concerned about the Communist Party's expanded military exercises around Taiwan. Still, he doesn't expect tensions to escalate further. He said, quote, I'm not worried, but I'm concerned that they're moving as much as they are. But I don't think they're going to do anything more. At present, Five major U.S. military forces are deployed in the Indo-Pacific, the U.S. Navy, Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. As of August 8th, the U.S. Navy remains stationed in the Philippine Sea. Beijing said it would cancel or suspend dialogue with the United States on a range of issues, from crucial climate cooperation to military matters and anti-drug efforts. After U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, Beijing routinely opposes Taiwan having its own contacts with foreign governments, but its response to the Pelosi visit has been unusually vociferous and belligerent. Last Thursday, China launched threatening military exercises in six zones just off Taiwan's coast. Taiwan's defense ministry said missiles have been flown over the main island. Furthermore, China's foreign ministry stated on Friday, August 5th, that the dialogue between U.S. and Chinese regional commanders and Defense Department heads would be cancelled, along with talks on military maritime safety, cooperation on returning illegal immigrants, criminal investigations, transnational crime, illegal drugs, and climate change will also be suspended. The ministry declared the actions were taken because... Pelosi visited Taiwan, quote, in disregard of China's strong opposition and serious representations. On Friday, White House spokesperson John Kirby condemned the decision to end important dialogue with the United States as irresponsible and called China's actions provocative. Kirby said, we will not be deterred from operating in the seas and skies of the Western Pacific, consistent with international law, as we have for decades supporting Taiwan and defending a free and open Indo-Pacific. 
The ministry also announced unspecified sanctions on Nancy Pelosi and her immediate family. Throughout Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, the Chinese Communist Party has constantly published threatening propaganda toward the self-governed island. Now, the CCP has teamed up with media outlets and tech companies to relabel Taiwan as a province of China. The campaign is called the Real Map of Our Taiwan Province. Even American company Google has bent to China's influences and labeled Taiwan as a province. China's official media reported that, quote, the map coverage rate has reached 51% within 20 hours since the start of the event. Taiwan objected to the label and furthermore requested that Google correct the facts. Starting August 5th, many netizens on Weibo discovered that their mobile phone navigation software, Baidu Maps and Autonavi Maps, can display streets, traffic signals, and even convenience stores in Taiwan. They can check bus and subway schedules on these apps. Chinese netizens were especially interested in the Taiwanese food scene. The search engine crashed after netizens entered the Chinese dish, Shanxi knife cut noodles, into the search bar 1,000 times more than normal. However, as the government continues to change things, the joyful atmosphere slowly shifted. On August 7th, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hua Chunying posted on Twitter a map of Taipei City, the capital of Taiwan. Her tweet read, There are 38 Shandong dumpling restaurants and 67 Shanxi noodle restaurants in Taipei. She then awkwardly drew a far-fetched conclusion, saying, People's taste palettes don't lie. This means Taiwan has always been part of China, and our long-lost child will come home one day. A Taiwan legislator, Wang Dingyu, indignantly responded on Facebook, Would you, Ms. Hua, care to count how many McDonald's and KFC are in China? And how many Japanese, Korean, Indian, and Thai restaurants are in China? Has China always been part of America, Japan, Korea, India, and Thailand? China's electronic chip industry is suffering from internal and external attacks. When the U.S. introduced the CHIPS Act, it offered government subsidies to major international chip makers like TSMC and Samsung that invest in the U.S. However, if companies that get U.S. subsidies then invest in China, they will be restricted and need to report to the U.S. Department of Commerce. At the same time, the U.S. side also restricted exports to China of chip equipment below 14 nanometers. In China, the country's largest state-backed chip fund has become a hotbed of corruption, according to Chinese media. Dozens of people are under investigation. This has caused the Chinese chip industry to stagnate. Our special commentator, Lo Wei, said, In recent years, the Chinese government has placed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of state-owned funds into the chip industry. This practice has disrupted the market. This makes it harder for the chip industry to develop. Additionally, they have tactics to attract chip companies to China. In Zhuhai, chip enterprises worth 40 to 50 million yuan can get at least 5 million yuan of government subsidies. These practices have caused a lot of corruption and wasted a lot of funds. Lo Wei said that China's chip actions from investment to listing are all circulating in the domestic market. They all hype themselves up over it. But this centeredness is disrupting the market. The bad news is now China's private enterprises are broke, but foreign investors think investing in China is too risky. Investments are stagnating. Only the Chinese government is financing the enterprises now, which shows how far the market has been distorted. On August 4th, an article in the New England Journal of Medicine reported the discovery of an animal-derived Hennepa virus, which they named the Langya virus. The discovery was made by a group of Asian scientists. At least 35 cases of infection were found in Shandong and Henan provinces, 26 of which developed symptoms that included fever, fatigue, a cough, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, and more. The reports also include other symptoms such as a decrease in white blood cells, which decreases the body's ability to fight infections. 
liver and kidney failure, and low platelet count, which may cause excessive bruising and bleeding. The CDC states that Hennepa viruses are highly virulent and associated with high case fatality ratios. However, the scientists of the report stated that so far, there have been no deaths or serious developments of the disease in patients. As of now, the scientists have not been able to confirm whether the Langya virus can spread from person to person. Patients have had no contact with each other, and those in contact were not infected. Currently, there is no further information or warning from the Chinese Communist Party. China is relaxing its hardline COVID-19 travel rules. From Sunday, August 7th, the country shortened how long it suspends inbound international flights carrying COVID-positive passengers. It signals that Beijing could soon ease its strict border controls. China's Civil Aviation Administration stated that incoming flights carrying five positive COVID-19 cases, or 4% of the total passengers, will be suspended for one week, and two weeks if 8% of passengers test positive. Previously, if a plane brought in that number of passengers, all flights operated by the responsible airline along the same route were suspended for two weeks. They were suspended for four weeks if 10 or more passengers tested positive. The blanket bans have led to travel chaos, with flights into China being cancelled abruptly. Rebooking isn't possible for weeks. Since early 2020, the country's borders have also remained largely closed. International tourism halted. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese students and workers abroad have been left stranded and unable to return home until two weeks later. They also complained about paying exorbitant prices to buy return tickets due to the limited number of flights. On July 26 this year, less than 100 international flights were inbound and outbound from China, down from nearly 3,000 on the same day back in 2019, according to Bloomberg News. The cautious resumption of international flights is the latest sign of Beijing easing its strict COVID-19 border controls. Thank you so much for watching Sound of Hope News. If you like what you saw, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you tomorrow.